Okay, welcome everybody to our third public uh, webinar, our partner webinar where we get to show you what the team has been up to over the past uh, month or so. Um, so, tonight we're going to take a look at um, the top 10 feature priorities lists. So we'll show you the same list that we showed you a couple of months ago, um, progress that we've made on that, and what we're filling some of those slots with now that we've, uh, now that we've completed them. We're also going to take a look at the new media downloads module that was released um, not long ago, a few days ago. Um, and I'll do a little bit of a demo with that and explain some of the use cases um, and give you an opportunity to, to see how it works and ask any questions. And then we're going to take a look at also recently released web app front end edit. So being able to manage and uh, allow visitors to manage and edit uh, web items from a website. Uh, again, I'll do, do a short demo of that. Then we're going to take a look. Uh, I think Luke's going to introduce uh, brand new import tools um, based off of the new import tools provided by Platform OS, which would be excellent. So uh, I'll not say any more on that. It'll be a surprise when he gets to it. <laughs> uh, and then we have new site packages as well. Uh, so Luke will also go through those. So um, we've got some, uh, some nice discounts for, for partners there. And finally, we'll take a look and uh, updating you on the agency success team, uh, just to let you know what, what they've been up to um, and, um, and yeah, how you, how you can engage with them. So, uh, top 10 features. So we went through, this, this is the list that we showed you um, two months ago. So we had visual editor phase two, e-commerce phase two, web app front end management, public API and Zapier, so phase one, the events module, media downloads module, staging to production, site usage and upgrades, uh, file manager enhancements uh, as well. One, two, three, five, six, ten. Good. Uh, so out of those, um, as I'm sure many of you will be aware, um, Visual Editor Phase 2 has been released. That was um, about a month ago now, I believe. Uh, so we have enhanced controls um, within the admin for, particularly for clients, for editing content on uh, static pages. Uh, so it's all point and click to update and edit and control images, text, fonts, etc., which is excellent. Um, then we have, obviously, as we're announcing tonight, the front end web app management. Uh, so being able to edit items that visitors submit on the front end, I'll go into that in a bit more detail later. And the events module, which we released um, just under a month ago now, uh, I know several of you have already been using that and there's, we've got live sites using it already, which is excellent. Um, so that is also complete. Uh, and of course, the public API Zapier phase one, uh, along with um, media downloads module. So now that we've got those uh, five items uh, complete, um, we're going to show you the revised list, uh, which is on the next slide. So this is the top 10 that we have yeah, one more. I missed one. <laughs> Looking at nine items all along. CRM enhancements. I'll come on to that on the next slide. So we have the new top 10 feature priority list. Now we've drawn this based on the previous list, um, feedback from our advisory board and the roadmap and, and obviously engaging and talking with you guys through intercom and email uh, in the wider community. Um, I'll just let, uh, let Mark in. There we go. Okay. So we're going to start with some of the ones that were on the previous list, so you can see we're not getting rid of them. We've got the e-commerce phase two. Now, that's actually almost done. Um, I believe the only thing left to come on that, which is in QC, is um, ease of importing from BC for products. Uh, but everything else, such as live cart update, um, uh, discount codes on cart, uh, sh basic shipping options, including order details in the uh, uh, workflow and autoresponder emails, all of that kind of thing is all already done. Uh, next is secure zones phase two. So this is a new one. So this is being able to add um, things like web items, module items to secure zones and not just pages, uh, which will give you an even greater level of flexibility. So at the moment, you could build a front end portal as I'm going to go into shortly um, and you can secure the whole page, but not necessarily individual items uh, from the admin. CRM user segments. So some of you will know, or many of you will probably know from uh, previous announcements, um, alongside our Zapier and public API release, 
um, we took on um, feedback and have revised the way we're going to be doing mailing lists. So Serum's user segments is in QC. And what it's going to do is allow you to create essentially lists of your users in CRM, but it's more generic and customizable that way because you can then use them as mailing lists or simply to create groups in other marketing tools using the Zapier or API integrations. Uh, BC blog module import tool. So again, this is one that's uh, almost ready. So this will be coming in the next few weeks or well, hopefully the next week. Uh, where we're going to be allowing the BC blog module to import um, as a web app. So anybody who's used the BC export tool will get the data files. You can just zip that up and put it in as a web app. And that'll import all of the blog, uh, blog items, so all of the blog posts, uh, along with any categories um, and individuals. So some, some people had more than one blog on BC. They'll all get imported magically for you. Then we have public API and Zapier phase two. So uh, we're gonna be adding a few more endpoints. We're taking on feedback. So anybody who's testing out Zapier and integrating with their live sites or, or any site that they're, they're building, um, if you would like an endpoint, let us know because we're, we're gonna be working on that and enhancing it further. I think we might touch on that a bit later on. E-commerce subscriptions phase two. So. Uh, this is one that some people have already been using. We have subscriptions in its basic form, um, but we're going to be adding a greater level of customization, uh, as you'll know from previous webinars, so that you can control the period of the subscription, whether it be monthly, annually, what happens if somebody cancels the subscription, things like that. Uh, then we have user roles phase one. So I'm almost finished on the top 10 list, I promise. So, um, based on feedback from the our advisory board primarily, uh, we've been looking at how we can quickly implement some level of user roles um, without doing a full-blown um, granular control and a system to, to edit all of those and manage them in portal. We'll get to that, but first we wanted to get something out that was going to do the job and then uh, we'll enhance it later. So phase one is going to allow you to toggle controls for your client users to show and hide certain things like perhaps you most people probably don't want clients to be able to delete a web app or a web item or edit the DNS, for example, things like that. So we're going to throw a whole bunch of things like that um, behind this toggle to allow you to control that um, as a switch. Then we have billing phase two. So we're going to be, uh, this has actually already started. Um, so we're going to be improving some of the back end structure of how we manage billing for scalability, but we're also going to be adding client direct. So at the moment we have client connect. So the client, you can define the plans in portal and the client can then pay those plans or we have agency direct where you as an agency can pay us directly. So we'll add in a third option that allows the client to come in and simply pay us directly. And then we have site copy staging to production. Again, work's already started on this. So this will allow you to create a site in staging and it can stay there for as long as you'd like and while you're building, testing, whatever. And when you're ready, you can then uh, apply a site plan, put the site live with DNS and it moved to production automatically. Um, and then finally, site usage and upgrades. Um, I think we've touched on this in previous public webinars. Um, our team are working on a whole new UI area in Portal for much more, uh, a much more granular view of all of the data on a site so that you, can, you and your clients can see uh, the value there um, and more easily track it and manage the uh, site subscription that the site is on. So that's a run through of everything that we've, uh, we've added to the top 10. And you'll notice that obviously they're in place of the ones, uh, some of these are in place of the ones that we've already completed. Okay, so next up is the media downloads module. So I'm going to do a bit of a demo of this one. We have, let me just move zoom out of the way. There we go. Uh, so media downloads module, as I'm sure most of you are aware, having used it on BC, will allow you to securely store assets on your site. Uh, this will be using uh, tokens. Um, so you get secure validation, which means if I, if I get a token and then I email somebody and a few hours later they view it, depending on the time we've set and the validation of the token in the browser, they won't be able to then view it themselves. Um, so it allows you to control access to uh, images or PDFs, etc. 
Uh, and then of course we have some custom fields in there like um, descriptions, names, etc., which I'll go into, much like web apps. And then again, much like web apps, I'll show you in a minute, you can then segment using uh, categories as well. So let's back out of this. So let me, oh, I need to, bear with me, I'll refresh. Okay. So I've got a test site here and I just created it earlier. And what I'm going to do is install the media downloads module, just in case anybody's not quite sure where to do this from. So you can do this either on any site you've already got, or you can create a new site and then do the same. So if I'm going to head over to the modules tab and I'm going to scroll down here to the media downloads row. And what I'm going to do is click install. So what I'm actually going to do before that is jump into admin and show you what that looks like. So far, all I have on this test site is starter site. So this is a pre-built site that you can choose to include if you'd like on creation of a site. Um, I know a number of partners use it for testing or to see examples of how codes worked. So when we do a major release, um, usually a few weeks afterwards, our team will put an example of the release into starter site. So you get to have a working, working um, version of this to test with, such as site create their e-commerce for products uh, and more. So if I head in here, you can see I don't yet have the module. So let's go back to site settings. Modules, and um, we're just gonna click install on that one. That'll just take a moment and then we can head in and take a look. Okay, so, now in our uh, left-hand menu, you can see I have media downloads automatically shown in the, um, in the modules area. And I'm gonna create a new item here. Uh, I'm actually not gonna create one, but I'll, I'll click on this button and then I'll switch over. So you'll notice it's very familiar and similar to the way web apps look and behave um, because again, we're building it on the same uh, architecture as, as web apps. So um, you can see that we've also got the categories in here. So I could assign particular, um, particular media assets uh, to categories as well to have a higher level of control. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna come back to this site in a moment. I'm gonna jump to a, a layout that I've already made and then I'll, I might touch on layout library in, in just a moment. So on my other test site, um, I also have media downloads installed. And you can see that I've got a couple of items in here. And I've also created a page for it. Don't know if my internet's starting to go, but uh, let me know if I uh, disappear. There we go. Okay, so in this page, you can see I've got a basic layer and I'm also calling out the, um, the module there. So all I've done to do this is again, using a toolbox, I go to modules, and it'll automatically find the module we've installed, which is media downloads, and I can select a layout. Uh, I'll come back to that in a moment. Okay, so if I take a look at the page, you can see the three items that are being outputted, and I can also uh, download, um, I can click one of these to download. Now, I've just done an example layout. You can have whatever you'd like in here. And if I, I don't know if you guys can see the very bottom of my screen there, um, but you can, there's a, a unique ID that's being generated each time to um, validate that I, I'm able to access it. So if I click this, it will then, whoops. Okay, hold on. Maybe I've installed something afterwards. There we go. It'll, if I click this, it will automatically download that asset and I can click it to, to view it as an example. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, just circle back to the empty test site and show you how I've um, gone about putting a layout in. Now, I've actually taken layouts from the layout library because I didn't want to go and look up and recap on all of the bootstrap um, standardizations and so on. Um, so let me just refresh to make sure my layouts are displaying correctly. So if I go down a little bit, Let's just find one that's repeatable. 
let's do yeah let's do that one so i'm going to copy this uh, content section and what i'm going to show you is just just briefly how you can then integrate that into the module and or a web app because it's the same process so i'm just going to hit copy it's also the same process for building a menu uh, layout out uh, or category layouts uh, etc so back on my empty site uh, it's only got starter site installed i'm just going to quickly create a page for media downloads Okay, and I'm going to apply the template that's there. Now, in Page Builder, I'm just going to paste in the layout that I've just copied from Layout Library and hit Save. And we'll go and take a look at that. Okay, so we can see that A, the images don't exist because I've just copied it, which is fine, we'll fix that. Um, but also, this is static content, so it's simply what I copied text wise uh, from this layout over here. So what I'm now going to do is show you how we can uh, split that into an actual layout. So let me create uh, two items just briefly. So if I do item one, let's do a file. Yep, that'll do. Okay. Uh, I won't add categories or anything now. For now, we'll just do this basic layout. Good, and let's create a second one. And upload a file. Okay. Right, so let's head over to our page. Okay, so just underneath, I'm gonna show you outputting the module. So we go again, as I mentioned earlier, toolbox. Select the module, I'm gonna say default because I haven't made anything else and just hit insert. So if I save this, what we'll see underneath is uh, just some simple text from the default layout of those two items that I've just created. So now what I want to do is just change that so that these display as the, uh, the files did over here. So I'm going to copy the inside container. We've got two rows apparently, that's fine. Oh yeah, right. So I'm going to copy an individual item, so just one of these columns, and let's get rid of the other one while I'm here. And we're going to put the module in the middle. So if I do this, um, I'll take this out, there we go. If I just do this and hit save, you can see that we're going to have the default layout, but in the middle of that. So now what we're going to do is head over to Code Editor, and I'm going to go to Layouts, and modules and in here the module that we've installed is automatically created a folder structure for me and for simplicity i'm just going to edit this default layout in here okay so i'm going to remove the image and i'm just going to replace it with a name and a download link let's do download over here and okay, so look at me trying to remember HTML. So I can do this dot, uh, I think it's link. I can check that in a moment. And we'll do this dot description as well. I think you missed an F, Martin. Have I? I missed an F. The A tag. Oh yeah, look at that. Shocking. Okay, so, so I'm gonna take this out the top and I'm gonna hit save. And we'll refresh on our page. So now we can see the download, but the URL is not coming through. So I should be able to do an insert field or check docs separately. So um, there's a media, There we go. There's a media downloads module uh, document in the help center that the developers put together. So it's already released and it contains all of the tags that you could possibly want and all the, and some liquid examples as well. So all I'm doing is checking that. So let's bring it over here, shall we? And in here, 
So this is um, the various different parameters we can do on output. We're just going to ignore that for now. Um, so you'll also see in here um, that we can control um, the time period, so the expiry. Um, so it, the default is set to 10 minutes, but you can have it for as long or as little as you like. So it's quite a, um, a nice control there. So you could just leave it and not worry about it, but you can also customize that as well. Uh, so I'm going to come down a little bit and we're going to go name, but what I'm looking for is um, the URL. So this dot URL, not link. There you go. And I'm also not going to do description. Actually, I'm just going to do name there. And we'll do name up here. Okay. No, that's not the page. There you go. So that is one example. Now it's, um, it hasn't got the pretty images because I haven't added um, the, f the full images, etc. cetera. Um, what you could do is use some liquids. So depending on whether it's a PDF or a PNG, et cetera, you could have a different icon. Um, so you'll notice on our documents over here, uh, if I scroll down, we have um, create date, but we also have file type. So if I just add this to my layout briefly, it's just gonna um, dump out the file type there. So you can see there, there's no dots in it, et cetera. It's just the extension that is in the file that you've uploaded. And you can do that to control um, icons and images, et cetera. So one example might be using uh, Font Awesome. So you could do, um, if I go to Font Awesome, icons, let's use a free one. Yep, that'll do. So if I copy this, what you could do, and um, so it's worth saying, if we go in here, I'll do it with PDF, there you go. So if I copy this and paste it in to my layout, what I could do is replace file type instead of PDF. Now this would then become dynamic and depending on the file type, it would automatically call in the icon from Font Awesome. Alternatively, you could use images, etc. Okay, so, um, that's just a quick example of how we've used layout library to do a really basic um, layout. You can obviously do much more complex ones and the same for um, other areas on your site. Um, alrighty, onwards. So, so next up is uh, the web app front end edit. So I also have a demo for this. So. This allows you, your visitors to, the visitors to your website to submit new items. Now that was already in place. They could always create web of items. Um, but what we've added to this is the ability for them to edit the items that they've created. So you can have some settings in there that says when the user is logged in, show the edit form as we'll see in a minute for uh, the items that they are allowed to edit. Um, and finally, we have workflows, so you can control whether or not a new item they submit, et cetera, automatically goes live, or maybe you want the site admin um, to control those as well. Useful for perhaps forums and, uh, and things like that. So I'm going to quickly show you this. So I'm on um, my test site. What I've done is already set this up because I didn't want to go through it um, or with you, you watching me doing more codes um, and missing more, more refs out of Ahrefs. So if I come over to here, what do I call the page? Um, I think it was web app edit, there we go. So I'll close this. What I've got over here is a simple page that I can show you. Um, again, I've copied a bit of a layout from layout library and I've done a similar thing to what you've just seen me do with the media downloads module. So I've called out the web app in the middle of this to repeat the items. Now in this web app, I have those two items. And these are created inside the admin. Um, so there we go. So you can see these two items there. Now then, what I'm going to do is on my site, I'm going to register. Let's do sign up here. There we go. So now I've signed up and it's automatically logged me in. So now if I go back to that page and I do web app uh, edit, I can now, um, because, the, because of the way I set it up, I now have the privilege of creating a new item if I would like to. 
um, and we can still see the items that already existed. So these might be items created by somebody else or by the admins on the site as I've done in this case. So a uh, new item, uh, let's choose an image. Uh, not gonna be very interesting, I'll just pick that one. And there we go. So I'm gonna submit the new item. So this is just a default form, I can customize it. And we can see that I've automatically, it's automatically created my item below and it's live updated there. And it's slightly broken on the styling, but you can also see an edit form that's automatically displaying for this item as well. Um, so because it's in columns, it's gone to the next row and, and dropped over, but it, it is for this, this item. So you can also see in here that it's automatically including the existing name and it should be doing description. I've done something slightly wrong in that field, so we can go and have a look in a minute. And I can submit changes such as a new description. Um, and submit that. And we can see that that's now updated. Okay, so if I head back into admin, I'll go to that web app. And you can see my new item in here. Ah, okay. This is, uh, I've removed the image because I didn't re-upload it. That's fine, that was my fault. So we come into the custom fields area and we can also see the edits that I've made there. So what I'm gonna do is quickly, uh, what's the time? Yeah, I'll very, very quickly before I hand over to Luke, dive into code editor once more. And instead of looking at modules, we're gonna look at web apps this time and the edit demo. And I'm going to take a look at this custom form. So there's a detail uh, form that we use for the submission of items. Um, and we, what I've done is created a separate layout for the editing of items. And the most important change, apart from it being edit, is that I've pre-filled these values. Um, and you can see here for the developers among you that the only difference is rather than outputting the name, I'm now outputting uh, the value in that data as well. Um, okay, so I've probably um, reached my limit. I should leave Luke some time. So I'm gonna head back to the slide deck um, and go from there. Okay, Luke, over to you. Great, thanks, Martin. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, so just uh, wanted to talk about a couple of new features. Well, a new feature and then some updates that we've got to um, pricing and plans and things like that. So we have been helping partners over the, over the last couple of years migrate sites across the site glide and we built some um, one-click uh, migration tools for things like uh, web apps and in partnership with BC Exporter we've done quite a few things there to help migrate data structure all those kind of things but migrating static pages and assets so things like images CSS and JavaScript have been sort of manual until now so um, we wanted to make that a little bit easier what we didn't want to do was we don't really believe in like a one click import of a whole site with legacy platform code because that's likely to bring across some inherent um, performance issues and things that just just aren't, aren't working as well as if the, the site's been properly built in a new platform. So we've in partnership with Platform OS, they've, they've built a fantastic cool, uh, tool that um, imports sites into Platform OS um, by getting the, the sort of front end static site. And um, we've taken that functionality and built it into SiteGlide so that it hooks up to some of the SiteGlide features as well at the same time. So things like um, hooking up to pages for the CMS editing. And what that means is we pull across all of the um, HTML, CSS, and um, JavaScript and images all at once in the background um, and actually try and optimize it in, in the process. So you'll see here there's an example of the Google page speed going up from 72 to 91 just from an import. But what that means is that the site is then imported in, in the sort of best way it can be, and you can then either put the site live just by adding a domain and, and putting the site live um, 
or you can choose to build in site glide functionality on tap at top and that's where you really kind of add the value your sort of experience and knowledge of site glide allows you to offer that to your clients but now you can kind of do that over time you can say right let's go live we've got away from either business catalyst if um end of life is the concern or if perhaps it's a website on another platform and it's there's bad hosting speed issues maintenance um nightmares um all those kind of things or even limitations with functionality so you can pull all of that across you can put it live and then you can decide to add functionality uh, within site wide over time so martin if you're able to just click the picture for me it should go off to a page there's a link in there for you <clears throat> So we've got this page that we will um, send a link out to because well, we're officially launching it today, where essentially it'll tell you all about the import tool. And what happens is we've, we've got two ways of doing an import. So you can either fill in a form that's on the bottom of this page, and we'll show you that shortly, uh, or you can actually do it yourselves using the CLI if that's something you're familiar with. So um, there's some documentation on that. And uh, for, for developers, we strongly recommend um, using the CLI to, to import it. But if, if you just want to do a test and you're not familiar with that, then you can fill in the form and we'll, um, we'll do that for you. Just be aware that obviously with high demand, um, it might take a little bit longer. So yeah, we, if you just scroll down a little bit more, Martin, there's a video on that page as well that will um, explain, that show you kind of the process of importing a site. I think it took about a minute, a uh, minute and, a little bit over a minute if you scroll to the end martin there you go to import that site to site glide the platform os um optimize the imagery in the pro imagery in the process and give that um improved score so you'll be able to run run those yourselves uh if you scroll down a little bit more for me martin um here we've sort of explained the main features of that so we copy over the static pages and put them into the CMS. So you can find them in, in the CMS and you could edit them using the uh, page builder or you could even use visual editor for that as well. We copy over all the assets, um, send them to um, either Amazon or Google and optimize them in the process. And this is actually Platform OS um, magic, uh, making all of that happen in the background. Um, and another thing, uh, if, if you guys remember actually from BC, it's something that um, the BC did offer, but um, far, far more in, enhanced now, I think. Uh, Adam might want to comment on later. Uh, but um, it, it'll also take things like forms and um, set up a workflow automatically to send to the user that's set up the migration, uh, the, the import. And obviously you can change that as well. So covering things like forms is really important then any like dynamic content so if the website had a blog or it had some web apps or whatever it will copy any front end pages and put them in as pages so it might that might be the way you want to go live just for if, if the uh, the migration or the client doesn't have a huge amount of budget to do any rebuilding at that point in time you might just want to do an import um, get the pages in there the client can edit the content if they want to in pages um, or you could choose to install our blog module, import the data um, as blog posts, um, and then delete those pages in the CLI. That's, that's a very quick process. You just click the folder and delete all the items. So totally up to you what you do with, with it once you've um, imported the, the code and, and the pages and everything. We just want to make it nice and simple to, uh, to get all of that in initially without picking, without bringing across any legacy um, bad functionality or code or anything like that and then once that's done you can um, pick a pick a plan to put it on uh, which i'll talk about more in a second it you can add your domain will automatically handle the ssl uh, for you that's another huge benefit of platform os it's, it's all all fully managed at a sort of enterprise grade to handle all of that point your domain to site glide and that's it it can go live um, so yeah here you'll see again that there's some um, some some seo improvements potentially there's a bit at the bottom of the page which will explain sort of some of the details of 
how it works for different sites, but essentially it totally depends on whether the site is um, well optimized to start with and, and that kind of stuff. So maybe have a read of that once we send out the link. But essentially it will pull across your site um, and do its best to sort of optimize it in, in the process. And yeah, you're, you're welcome to fill out that form. Um, we'll, we'll run an uh, import for you or you can do it via the CLI. It's worth noting as well that the example we've used here is actually a very normal uh, example. It's got several hundred pages. It's done by, it's been managed by a client. Images might not be very well optimized and it's still only taken uh, just over a minute there. So uh, we're really talking very, very quick speeds there. I just, I'll just jump in with one point when, um, yeah, the performance is going to be optimized as part of the, the process uh, and you will see performance increases by default, what you will maybe get worried about when you see the SEO uh, drop in compliance, that's because on the import, it's going to go onto a staging or a non-production site. It might be on production, but you haven't pointed a vanity domain to it yet. So we automatically disallow indexing because you don't want to have a, a duplicate content issue should your client choose not to. Uh, go live with your import. So uh, that's where you'll see a SEO drop in Lighthouse, but everything else will be high. And of course, once you do go live and their domains pointed to it, indexing will just start unless you've put index no follow uh, or no robots, etc. Uh, but uh, you'll then get the higher score in the SEO part of Lighthouse as well. Just a note. Yeah, thanks, Adam. That's, that's great. Um, yeah, and, and to Martin's point as well, this this is a BC site, pretty pretty standard. I think with any site, things like images just aren't well optimized over time. Clients upload new images, that kind of stuff. So you get those immediate sort of um, gains without really having to do anything, which is a, a pretty cool feature and some great work done by the Platform West guys. Um, there was a question that came in uh, about yeah. cost. Uh, Louise has asked, is there a cost associated with that import? Not, not, not at all, no. So you can run those yourselves. You can request them. We will import those sites for you. Um, they'll become trial sites on SiteGlide, and then you can um, put them live when you're ready. And that's, that's obviously what, what we're hoping for, and that you can either build functionality on top straight away or do it over time. So, and somebody asked earlier whether this would work with WordPress. Um, it will work with anything that's publicly available. So as long as it's not in like secure zones, um, hidden behind something, it will pull in the front, front end sort of public facing website from any platform without worrying about the functionality. Um, so that's what we really wanted to make sure we didn't do is bring across bad sort of code and bad functionality. There will be times I'm sure you want to do a redesign, a rebuild, but if you're happy with the design or the project doesn't warrant it, then this is, this is perfect for that. We've had one more question, Luke, which is, uh, Daniel's asked, what's the difference between this and BC Exporter? That's a great question. So that's comparing the two approaches really. So BC Exporter gives you everything out of BC pretty much as it was in BC. So you then, you could use our web app um, import tool, which will automatically recreate web apps, the structure, the, con the, the data, um, and the things like category um, relationships. And that's incredibly powerful. That could save you days of trying to map that manually. But copying across all of the assets manually from BC Exporter and all of the code is, you're going to bring across BC code, you're going to have to rework it. It's just more of a manual process, which might be the right thing to do in certain circumstances. But I think the, um, the site import tool is great for just bringing across the, the sort of more static elements. So you still need BC exporter or we'd recommend using it if you're doing, if you're trying to bring across a lot of dynamic content and rebuild it as dynamic functionality. And we'll be building more import tools for for that kind of work because that is that is a big job and it's um just the web app import tool has saved a huge amount huge amounts of time already on, on those kind of processes yeah so just the the background on the the 
platform OS importer that SiteGlide have leveraged. Uh, we've done that in a way that, as mentioned, you could pull in any site, whether it's sitting on WordPress or Drupal or BC or anything, .NET Nuke, if you're still running old sites on that old beast. Um, the point being is it's just pretending to be a browser and ripping down everything just like you would if you were browsing the site. And you can set concurrency on it so that you could have parallel uh, processes running and ripping down that site really fast and then deploying it back up to platform OS. So the idea is some of the parts of the importer where it minifies assets, it uh, optimizes images, it goes in and looks for specific form tags. So uh, it'll go, oh, there's a business catalyst form submission tag and replace it with a JavaScript little widget that will do it uh, for on platform OS. That can be mapped for other systems as well. So over time, you want to import from Shopify and do a full e-commerce rebuild or there's some other system that uses a different identifiable but different form submission process, uh, it could parse and replace that with a site glide created one or a platform OS one. So the, the idea is that this is a great foundation for other sites that need to migrate from other platforms. Yeah, I might just quickly show that. I was trying to do it in the video. Let's do show a working example. There we go. So if I go to the actual example site, we can go to the contact page and we can, uh, okay, Dean must have removed the form while testing. <laughs> Let's try, they've got contacts on a few other places. Okay, no, he's deleted it, it's fine. Sorry, can't show you that. <laughs> but yes, uh, Adam's right. So you would normally, if Dean hadn't deleted it, show um, an HTML form um, in this place here and it will still work uh, as Adam says. That's one thing we've done as an example, we've, we've hooked it up to BC forms um, to handle that. And as Adam says, we could do that with more, more platforms as well. So it'll be an ongoing thing as, as we get more requests and more feedback, we'll, uh, we'll keep making it more and more powerful. Um, so some uh, Bruce has asked, uh, is this done with the CLI? Um, so it's all done with the CLI, um, but you can, if you're not familiar with that, you can request that and we'll do that for you. So it is, it, it's a manual process in that sense for us, but um, we're more than happy to help if, if, um, if you're not too comfortable with that straight away. The good news is if you've got say a thousand sites that you wanted to import all at once, uh, the same speed will will occur. So if you're downloading a thousand sites that you then want to push to platform OS, uh, it will be able to, through SiteGlide's script, deploy and we'll take on as much load as you can throw at it. That's good. You um, should have, you need to do some sort of deal for your channel partners, Luke. <laughs> It's a good idea. Might come on to that in just a second. <laughs> um, sorry, there was one more one more question from Mark. Um, is the import CLI command documented? So, um, Martin, could you just uh, just go back to the form very quickly? So, on this page, which we will send out, um, there's a few places it'll mention whether you uh, might want to use the CLI. So, just there in the note one, Martin. You can click CLI, it's also at the top of the page. So this will give you all the details on installing the CLI, but also the commands at the bottom, Martin. Um, there's some commands in there to show about uh, importing and um, uh, pulling a site in. So yeah, just just follow those, those steps and you can import as many sites as you want, as Adam has said. <laughs> Yeah, we've actually got, um, I've got an additional video. So one of our partners asked for, well, a couple of partners have asked for a, a non-Windows version of setting this up. So we have a Mac version of setting this up and we'll get that up tomorrow as well. So it couldn't be easier. Great. Um, so yeah, if um, along alongside that, we need, we're we pretty confident that this tool is, is going to help you import, hopefully, hundreds, thousands of sites, whatever it might be uh, over time. So we wanted to make sure that we coupled that with there being no other reasons why you can't say yes to clients. So our, one of our main ethos is, is helping our partners, helping digital agencies take on any project, saying yes to a client that comes to you with a request. And 
yes, we try and make that based on value and functionality and not hitting limitations, but we know in business and running an agency that sometimes it's down to price. So we want to make sure that price isn't one of those, um, those factors as well. So Martin, if you could just go to the next slide, please. Um, so what we've done is we've come up with a few, so this is working very closely with uh, Platform West. We've considered all the um, current pricing, we've looked at BC and looked at how we can try and help use this import tool and get the most from it. So we've come up with three new plans um, which work specifically really well with the static site importer because they give increased storage bandwidth when you don't use things like API calls and database objects. So there's three new plans um, that will be available on a page uh, very soon. So um, we'll get that live in the portal. You can just see them there. So static site, mic micro, mini and max um, that will show those kind of usage limits. If you just want to give that a quick click, actually, Martin, um, yeah. get the URL again, please. So this is in draft at the moment, um, but essentially we're, we're firming all of this up and getting it ready to launch. Um, if you scroll down a little bit, Martin, there's the static plans. So those three there are going to be the new plans to help you bring across sites that have, say, more assets than our, our typical plans cover at the lower levels. Um, so you can handle more storage and more bandwidth without having to pay for um, more general dynamic usage like database objects and API calls. Uh, we've had a few, that's based on lots of feedback. So uh, another one, uh, another thing we've done is increase some of our usage limits again with Platform OS and some of our own as well. Um, we've made sure that every plan, even the minimum ones now come with three admin users. It was a, it was a small point, but limiting the amount of clients that can log in to one was just just that little bit too restrictive whereas three hopefully means that most most clients can can work with that and then as the site grows you get more and more so you'll see that as you go up through the plans the usage limits increase nicely so that it's all about getting more value um, as you sell more of the value to, to clients they get more out of the site it's performing well and they're hopefully making making more profit and value from the site itself. So we'll, we'll release those very, very soon, but um, the pricing, we don't, we don't do public pricing, so they're, they're hidden for now, but you'll see those in the portal with the um, BC um, base pricing that we're currently offering. So yeah, three new plans, increased usage, um, things like storage and bandwidth has been in quite, increased quite considerably considerably. Uh, again, working with Adam and, and Platform West to really make sure that it works for them, it works for us, but also it works obviously for, for you guys and for clients. So we're continually uh, analyzing that. And then the final point is we have an offer that I think works very nicely with the import tool, which is our agency starter pack. There'll be firm details of this coming out very, very soon, but essentially if you buy a 10 pack of annual sites. Um, it only needs to be on the starter plan, uh, the starter on micro should be the same price. You get 50% off and that's, so you pay for those 10, you get 50% off the price of those, what those annual plans would cost. But not only that, you get that 50% discount for another four years. So that's like those 10 sites are half price for five years, which is, um, pretty hopefully pretty generous <laughs> as long as it's on a un uninterrupted annual uh, annual plan then that will just carry on and you'll get that discount for five years and furthermore to that if what happens upgrade, if you go up yeah what if you yeah. go up Luke? if you need to upgrade because obviously the site grows the customers doing um, doing more with the website and getting more traffic that kind of stuff you're adding more uh, web apps and modules and things. So as the usage increases, you can go up to any any plan and it's charged at the pro rata discounted rate. So those 10 plans are essentially half price for five years, no matter how much you need to upgrade. So it's, um, 
it's pretty flexible hopefully it gets you gets you can really get you started with with 10 sites straight away so those sites go live straight away you can use the importer to get um, get them up and running put the domain on and then as they grow you get um, access to those discounted upgrade rates as well as I say we'll send out far more details um, or confirm the details shortly but we just wanted that last little element to make sure that um, especially with B BC end of life being it's a it's a challenge for people we want to make sure that um, SiteGlide is a is an option that you can use for any type of site not just um, not just complex ones excellent and we did have one question on one of the details there from from mark which is do partner login um so partner users consume an admin user slot on site plans yeah so we'll we'll make that clear on the pricing but no they do not we do not um charge at all for agency users in our opinion there it's it's in, so important having them in the sites we want you guys building things and helping clients it's only there as a as a kind of measure against the size of client if they've got 20 staff then they're probably going to be doing a lot more it's going to be more usage intensive so um, they need to be on a higher plan so that is only for client logins Excellent. And then we have an additional question from Mark, which is something we hopefully can part answer now. I don't know if we've shown this publicly yet. Uh, his question is, what happens when a plan hits the resource ceiling? So when it hits some of the limits, does it get stuck? Does it get automatically upgraded? I'm not sure. I'll leave that with you, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, I'd really like to show the UI for that very quickly. If I'll, uh, I'll try, <coughs> try and get you a screenshot for it. Oh, okay. um, if, if you... <coughs> If you can, Martin, that would be great while I explain it. Okay. You... I'll pause so I don't load everything else. In the game. Sure. Um, so essentially, we've got a new UI for usage and upgrades. It's called subscriptions <clears throat> coming out very, very soon. We've been in the final stages of checking all the data with Platform OS, making sure it's all correct, and launching that UI. So that will show you the current plan that you're on and the usage of the high level um, metrics that you can see here, so like database objects. <clears throat> Um, database objects, emails, storage, API calls, those kind of things. So I'll show you what you're on already. Um, and then it will also further down in the table, it show you a breakdown of the site glide usage. So within database objects, you've got um, module items, CRM users, e-commerce, that kind of thing. It'll show you a breakdown of those. And when you approach a limit, Martin, if you can just scroll up a bit to the colored section, it will show you the an orange bar if it's sort of hitting 80% limits and then red if it's if it's uh, hitting, hitting 100%. And at that point, we'll automatically upgrade onto the next uh, appropriate plan, um, which, as I said earlier, will give you far more value because you can see there, it'll, there's already a big jump in the usage limits for the next plan. We've Again, we've created more plans recently so that the 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 jump between plans is is minimal in terms of price, but gives you as much uh, value as possible. You will also from that UI be able to downgrade if you need to. We're not going to do that automatically because it's impossible for us to judge whether what you're going to use in a month. So something like API calls, emails, that kind of thing, you might want there to be 5,000 available. So we'll just leave it on that plan. What we will do is keep improving the UI and portal to give you more reports of that kind of stuff. So you'll be able to see how many sites are utilizing the, the current plan and, and maybe drop them down if you want to. Hopefully that answered that question. Um, yeah, it's deeply. And we'll obviously give warning, I think as Lucas already mentioned before, we're not just gonna turn this on. Um, yeah, so first step will be release this new UI so that you can see the current usage of sites. Give you guys some some time to sort of look through that, see how it's um, how it's affecting your sites, and then we'll communicate the process of um, putting in place um, the subscription process, and we've got some billing upgrades to do at that point. So it will it will be very well communicated. Yeah. Excellent. So yeah, um, final point to me, Martin, if you want to just go back to the slide maybe. Yeah. No questions was 
really, if if you haven't, if anybody who's watching this hasn't really used Sightglide or you have an account and you haven't looked at it for a while, either sign up for a free agency account and then you, you've got access to the site import tool and you can import any sites, um, see see how well they come across and see the performance gains and know that you could up, upgrade them whenever you wanted. Um, and then if you want to take advantage of the the bulk, uh, the agency starter pack, uh, we'll release details of that very, very soon. So probably worth having a having a play with the static site importer to be ready for that. Because that will be a limited um, limited offer for partners. Thanks, Lou. Good stuff. And then finally for me, just as we're coming up to the top of the hour. Oop, there we go. Um, so yes, that was right. So I've got two final things, sorry. So I'll make them quick. Um, Luke, did you want to do the Zapier one or shall I? Yeah, I'll quickly run through that. Um, yeah, so I don't know who's seen, seen or used our API or, or Zapier integration. Again, this is one of our biggest beliefs is making sure that agencies have full access to data so you can capture it, access it, output it, query it, and share it with any other system without limits. And we believe that's what held us back on, on BC and is the downfall of nearly every platform out there. So we wanna make sure that that's not the case. We've already done huge things that make that possible um, with the Zapier integration as a good example. So you can now access CRM users, cases, orders, uh, sorry, orders and um, products are coming out very, very soon. So that's in the, the phase two release that's uh, pretty close. But you can already access your yeah, cases and users and web apps. You can get data out of SiteGlide and push it into any platform using the Zapier integration that connects to 2000 other tools. Um, without you having to code, you can just literally hook them up. Um, in the phase two implementation that's very, very close, that also does putting data into SiteGlide. So you can use Google Sheets, for example, to maintain and manage all of your uh, web app data or customer data. You could pull it in from a chosen CRM tool that you use, maybe Salesforce. You could push it out to financial applications, ERPs. There's just so much you can do with the Zapier integration specifically, but also if you want to do something more custom, you've got full access to the API you can build on top. Lovely. Yeah, and a final point on the Zapier front. Um, if any of you have created cool, uh, cool Zaps that have really helped your clients, um, do use the share link if you can um, and on, on the Zap and uh, send it over to us because what we can do is add some pre-built Zaps into our um, Zapier app here uh, so that others can get started even more quickly and perhaps have some ideas available to them that they, they may not have originally thought of. Um, so yeah, we can start creating a community effort over on, on Zapier. Okay, and then uh, finally for me, just a short note about our um, our agency success team. So uh, I mentioned two months ago that we had a couple of people join, well, three, three new staff back in uh, sort of January time, uh, two of which joined the agency success team, Emily and Sebastian. So if you haven't already uh, heard from them, um, so those of you that who have been emailing us or talking to us in Intercom, I'm sure you, you have or in forum, you'll, you'll have heard from them. Um, but the rest of you, now that they're getting up to speed, will begin hearing from them um, more regularly. Um, so they'll be in touch with you over the next uh, week or two um, to find out how you're getting on, uh, if you need any help, um, if you've got any feedback, if you need any features, and just generally um, looking after you um, and, and making sure that you can uh, continue delivering for your clients. Um, so the other thing that they're focusing on is improvements to documentation. Uh, they're doing some courses and videos as well, um, as I think pretty much everybody will have seen the docs have been growing, uh, particularly over the past few months. So um, yeah, if you find anything in docs that's unclear, let us know and they can uh, take a look and update it for you there uh, as well. Alrighty. And I think that brings us to the end. Excellent. Any questions from anybody? I know we answered some on the way through.
Stunned silence. Excellent. <laughs> I think we managed to answer everything as we went along. Yeah, which is fantastic. Yeah, um, great. Well, yeah, appreciate um, everybody's time. So I think there's some there's some new things to play around with there if you haven't already. So the media downloads uh, module, the web app front end edits, and then obviously very keen to see how people get on with the site import tool and pulling across BC sites, other sites, you might want to use it as a uh, lead generation tool for winning new business. If you can go to that client and show them potential performance gains. So yeah, quite, quite excited to see what everyone does there. Um, so yeah, some, some nice comments coming in. Thank you everybody. Um, really loving the, particularly the import tool. Everyone's quite excited about that. <laughs> well, I think the import tool in combination with the promotion, the 50% uh, pack once they I think once they see that, and the import tool and how that will be hand in hand, they'll be like, okay, we're ready to, we're ready to rock and roll. Let's get all of those last stragglers off business catalyst. I think still 60% of the world's CMS is run on WordPress sites. So there's a huge opportunity to do those imports show that just the performance gains from uh, Google lighthouse and start converting and that extra margin that you're going to keep for yourself um, on your hosting plans that you sell to your clients is money in the bank for you as well. I think it's pretty exciting all around. So helping your clients, helping your cash flow, uh, great job site glide and leveraging all the toolkit and everything you're building on top of platform OS. We're, we're really excited for you. Great work. Yeah, I want to say thanks to all of you, just um, you know, Adam and Dan, site glide. I'm actually excited again which uh, I haven't had for a long time, not since, uh, not since Adobe took over. <laughs> so um, yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming back and uh, helping us out of a big hole and uh, yeah, all, all really exciting now. So looking forward to getting loads of sites across. That's, that's great to hear. That's, that makes it all worth it, all the hard work and that's exactly what we want to do. So yeah, thanks for everybody who's, who's already working with us. Yeah. And, and, and spot on with the support as well. Good to know. Thank you. Um, All righty. Well, uh, I think that will bring us to the end of our recording for this week. Um, if just, anybody... Oh, do we have one more question? I was just going to say uh, say a quick thank you as well to to Platform OS. Um, we've we've worked with them a lot over the years to get functionality in place and and all those kind of things, but also trying to weigh up providing the level of quality and, and performance and all of those things while still making it work for the some of these BC sites some of the BC partners. It is a bit of a challenge. Platform OS handle all sorts of things in the background like backups and um, enterprise grade infrastructure that does come at a cost. So thank you, Adam and, and the team for making these new plans and, and um, things possible, building an awesome import tool, which I, I'm very excited about. So yeah, thanks again to the, to the whole team there for an awesome job and great partner to have. Yeah, our, our pleasure. And it is a, it's a mutual admiration society because uh, you know, it's working with great partners who give us the feedback we need to be better uh, keeps pushing us forward and obviously our team at platform os do all the hard work and a big shout out to pavel who did the uh, posify importer which is what uh, is leveraged here by cyclide we're just going to keep focusing on performance scalability reliability security uh, flexibility all those things and go down the stack so that you don't have to great thank you yeah Thank you, everybody. Uh, got a few more comments. Yeah, site import seems to be uh, pretty exciting, which we'd hoped. So, yeah, great. Thank you very much, everyone. Back over to you, Martin. Well, with that, I'll just I'll end it for this week. I hope everybody continues to stay well and stay safe, and we will see you all next time. And I will stop the recording here. <laughs>